Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is my indoor worm composting channel. And today the red wigglers are going to move. So we are going to harvest these three bins that we've been following for the last year, and we're gonna move them to the DIY system. So first things first, let's look. I've been trying to dry out the castings a little bit so that I can sift them and hopefully get kind of a, a clean break when we're moving them to their new system. So stick with me for a little bit. We're gonna do some harvest. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how I set up my DIY system with the bedding and the worms and the food. So that is the current plan for today. So let me get my screen. So there will be some worms, but we will get them out in one of the processes. So looking at the leftovers, these will be going back with the worms into their new system. So we're not gonna leave anybody behind. So I will put this into a bucket to wait for us to put everything together. Most of the time when I'm doing my harvest, I do try to make sure that I'm letting things dry out so that I can sift. And uh, that makes it a little bit faster to get things harvested. Okay, then as we're getting towards the part that's a little bit more wet, we might not be able to sift. We might have to uh, go ahead and do a bit of a light migration. So this will be a combination sort of harvest today. And somebody had asked me if it does hurt the worms when you sift them. If you don't let them go for too long, I'm spending about maybe 10 or 15 seconds shaking them back and forth. Um, really small worms might be damaged, but the cocoons and the larger worms will be just fine. Okay, then I'm gonna pick out the food here and start moving things over for the light migration. And hopefully we'll see how much the, the population has grown over the course of the last year that they've been in this particular setup with this project. So normally with a light migration, you're just kind of making little piles, oops, and skimming off the top. But if you have large objects that are food, like this onion, uh, they won't dive down as easily. So you do have to kind of remove those obstacles to get them to move. It's a little colder in the basement now. It's uh, 65 degrees, so the worms are a little bit less active, which does not make this process any easier. Okay, well, I will bring you back when I'm done. Still going here. We're probably at about the 45 minute mark. The uh, castings are a little damp, which probably between the fact that the worms are a little cold and the castings are a little damp, the worms aren't migrating all that fast, which is why I'm not taking you with me for the whole thing. Um, we did a video on that last week. So right now I'm just trying to get these guys moved and get the wormery cleaned up. I have got some hot peppers that I would like to get started. Uh, some of the super hots and peppers that are native to really close to the equator require a very long growing season if you're going to get any peppers. And so I have purchased some very interesting peppers and I know that I need to get them going at least two months before I would start normal, you know, like jalapenos and stuff. Okay. So put in the comments below, what are you growing? What are you using your uh, worm castings on this coming spring? Okay, while I am waiting for the worms to do their migration part on their own in the light, I'm going to show you how I do the setup of a brand new bin. This is bedding that's been sitting for about two weeks now that I made for the Red Wigglers. And I'm going to drop, oops, that's too much, some of it in the bottom of the bin here. All right, not that much. And then I'm going to take some of my viewers' ideas here to keep the bins separated a little bit. And I'm going to, I don't know if I should put these in the corners. Put your comments below. Should I be putting these in the corners or should I be putting these in the middle? Anybody that's done this before. Also, I am noticing that the uh, 
plastic is starting to degrade after about five years. So anybody that has a professionally made system, uh, how long do you see that the uh, plastic of the bins lasts? Um, I am starting to see some cracking, etc. So this will be my bottom layer where everything kind of drips down to. Um, back in the day when I first started the DIY system, I had uh, just left this blank for like a uh, sump, but that didn't work. The worms got down there, so I decided that this would be better served to hold the worms. Okay, so I'm going to give them a little bit of food here, just in the way of um, a little bit of alfalfa. This isn't my real worm child. This is just alfalfa meal, and I'm just putting that in here to get this started. I'm going to put all the worms on the top and let them gradually get down here. So at this moisture, this is even a little bit wet right now. Hopefully this will be ready for them in a month or so. Let me get the next level up. Okay, that, that does seem better. That does seem like it's holding it a little bit more firm with those little bits of pipe in there. So this level has some very small, um, 1 16th of an inch, which is just a couple of millimeter holes in here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give them some this part some bedding as well. I'm trying to get up to this little bit of a ledge here. I made a total of 10 gallons or 38 liters of bedding to use up for this whole thing, so I would have enough, because each one of these layers, a maximum of 10 gallons, so I figured, considering that it's not entirely full, that that should be enough. And then I've got my little water pipes that I cut to uh, match that ledge here. And we'll put the top layer on now. So this has pretty good size holes. I'll put an inset of it next to a Sharpie so you'll be able to get the idea, but my pinky finger doesn't fit through the hole, uh, but the worms definitely will be able to. So let me get them some bedding. This is the overs from what I've screened already, so I'm gonna put that in first. It does contain a little bit of food. That's the last of my prepared bedding. It's pretty wet. And now I will go check on the worms and see how well they're migrating. Okay, we're at about an hour now and just wanted to, you know, for people who have not seen the light migration before, I'm using the uh, V and Peggy method of using the uh, paintbrush. And it, it, it is best if you start with a, a round pile and basically work away at all the edges. It makes things go a little bit faster if you have, you know, four sides to Thick castings off of and I you know I am gonna probably get a couple of the little hatchlings along with this but um, that will be okay they will hatch out and uh, we'll catch them when we sift the castings uh, for a final time in probably a three or four days right now I'm just trying to get most of the worms to t basically I would like to see how much they have multiplied since I started the bin. Each one of the bins got about three quarters to one pound of worms and so I will be happy if we've got more than three pounds of worms. I'm not sure if we're gonna get there but I don't intensively grow or try and breed my worms. I, you know I don't do this for a business. I don't sell worms. I don't sell castings. So I feed them what there is to eat. Um, so if, if it doesn't multiply by a lot, that's fine. I mean, that's not my goal. Um, but I do always see a lot of babies and stuff. So I know that they are reproducing, but I don't know if they're reproducing faster than the old ones are dying. And I think they live probably for two years in captivity, maybe more. But, uh, so yeah, it works if you can, you know, work around the edges until you get a clean pile. And then uh, now I have to wait for another 10 minutes for them to dive back down. And then I'm going to scoop all this up and run it through my big sieve and put the big chunks in the newly created DIY red wiggler bin. 
here at about an hour 15. Uh, another tip when you are uh, doing this is to squish them into a taller tower and then they will be forced into kind of a more deep pile so that you can get more of them together at once. We're getting close. I think we're almost at a solid ball here. Okay, and here we are at the end of the light harvest of Red Wiggler bin number one. So I'm just gonna brush off a last couple of crumbs here, but for most part, this should be a solid worm ball. So I am going to slide the uh, scale over and we can weigh and see what we've got in the way of worms. Okay, so there we have I've got most of them. Some of them are still in there. So 0.8 pounds or point, wait, no. 0.4 kilograms, 0.9 pounds. And that was bin number one. All right, let's move on to bin number two. All right, here we are. We've come to the end of uh, bin number two. Kind of cleaning up the very top here. It's not 100% but I did want to get a good idea of how many worms that we have here. Trying to clean them up the most I can. I'm gonna say this bin had quite a bit more worms. All right, so I'm gonna pick these guys up. Put them in the little That's 1.7 pounds or 0.8 kilograms for bin number two. Now there is some castings in there, but mostly worms. I wasn't going to drive them down to the very last second of the last scrap of dirt. Uh, no need to stress them out that much, but uh, I'm happy with what we're getting. Now, now on to bin number three. Or we are at bin number three, and it seems to be quite a bit fuller than the other two, so this is going to take a while. We're up to about an hour and a half now, and you can tell we're really nowhere near being done. So I'm going to uh, come back when we're a little bit closer to finished. Okay, here we are at the end of bin three, and these guys are moving pretty slow after me trying to migrate them for about two hours. A lot of people say that their worms don't migrate like this. Uh, it's just patience. It's really brutal patience. So I am um, at the end of my patience, and I think that I am close enough to get a good idea of how many worms are in this bin. So I've got my little measurement bin here. I'll kind of flip. Yeah, see there's still quite a bit of castings in here. I just think maybe the cooler temperatures, you can see this is a lot of castings down here. I'll pick through them a little bit. But I, I think we're close. And that is 0.7 kilograms or 1.7 pounds. And we might, you know, I think any castings that I have in here, quite honestly, are probably equal to the amount of worms that I left in the castings that I pulled out. So I think it all goes together. So. We've got probably about four pounds of worms. I'll put the exact math, worm math, at the bottom here. Now let's release the worms into their new home. All right, well here is my four pounds of worms, give or take. I think that's a good amount of worms for this bin. Now let me get them some food for all of their hard work. Good worms. Okay, so I'm going to bury it on this side, some uh, well-aged pumpkin there. And I'm going to cover that up with the worms. And hopefully they will make good use of that. Now that I've taken away most of everything that they had previously, there's a few flecks of the potatoes and whatever, but I think that is a good healthy feeding for them for the next two or three weeks. 
If you like the Red Wigglers, I have a playlist for them that I will put right over there. And if you like the DIY system and want to know how that works, I have a playlist you can watch right over there. And if you don't want any of that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video down here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.